Hey YouTube, sorry to disappoint you. Still no studio yet. I am staying with family. We are kind of on our RV travels. We had come home for Christmas to be with our family. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that my best friend and my homie, who was my grandma that I took care of, um, passed away recently. So we came home early for that and we've been just kind of staying with family this month. So I appreciate your patience as we skipped recording a YouTube video last week because I was just going through a really difficult time. Um, things were a little hard, but we are back on track this week. And I want to talk to you today about how you can get lucky in 2021. Okay. Because when you watch this video, it's going to be about like probably two or three days before New Year's Day. So better late than never. But who doesn't want to get lucky in 2021, right? Like everybody, especially in real estate. My name's April Crosley. I'm a real estate investor in Berks County, Pennsylvania. I flip houses here. I own some small multifamily apartment buildings. We also do a little bit of private lending. We're looking for much larger projects right now, large multifamily mobile home parks, storage facilities. And my husband and I are traveling all over the United States in our RV. So we actually sold our house in Berks County and we are wandering around the United States. Um, right now we're staying with family <laughs> for the holidays, which is a little inconvenient for both them and us, um, but our RV is in storage and we're going to pick it up tomorrow. So yay, we will be on the road for New Year's down in Florida somewhere, and then we are heading out west. So if you're out west somewhere, I would love to connect with you if you're a real estate investor out in like Arizona, Utah, New Mexico, somewhere out there. So anyway, people always say to me, you are so lucky because we are traveling around the United States in our RV. And it's kind of like nails down a chalkboard. I know why people say that, I get it, but it's kind of like nails down a chalkboard because when people tell me I'm so lucky, how did you get so lucky that at your age, you're traveling the United States in your RV, sold your house, like working from the road, not a care in the world, you're so lucky. And I think they just don't know and haven't seen how much hard work it's taken to get this lucky. <laughs> so it's definitely not luck. So I'm going to tell you what you can do so that you can be lucky in 2021 and how I got so lucky that I'm able to do this. So I would say the first thing is consistency. Whatever I do, once I fall into a groove, I do it consistently. So like if you have a flip business, your marketing needs to be consistent. Never stop. Never. Always analyze your numbers and make sure your marketing's working, but never stop. Okay. You have to do things consistently. My marketing's consistent. I have the same schedule every week that I work on for my flip business and my multifamily business. So I try to do things consistently and try to time block. Do I do it perfectly? No, because I'm human <laughs> and things come up and I get derailed and thrown off track. So things don't always go perfectly, but I try to be very consistent. The second is sacrifice. I would hate to tell you this, but everyone's like, do what you love and you'll never work another day in your life. It's not true. <laughs> Sorry to burst your bubble. You have to work hard and you have to sacrifice. I was just telling someone this the other day. I was like, it's so easy to want to play video games and it's so easy to watch TV and it's so easy to sit down and read a book. We want to do the things that are easy and take the path of least resistance. But guess what? Easy gets you nowhere. You know what gets you places? When I was working in a hospital and I had lunch break or dinner break and I was sitting down handwriting envelopes for letters and still consistently getting my marketing out even though I was working full time. Did I wanna do that? No, I would have much rather just been sitting in a break room talking to people or watching TV or even at home at night with my family if everyone was just kinda of like sitting around watching TV, I was folding letters and filling out envelopes. You have to do the stuff that isn't fun. It's not always gonna be fun. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard, okay? And you have to sacrifice your time and do the things that are hard. So put the things that are hard on your schedule first and make yourself do them, okay? And then 
reward yourself with the things that are easy. Like, okay, I did all these hard things that were on my list. Now I'm going to play a half hour video games. I don't like video games. <laughs> I personally would never be in a relationship or married to someone that play video games, but to each their own, it seems to be a thing that people can relate to. So like treat yourself with that. If that's something that you love or shopping or reading a book or whatever you find easy. So staying consistent, sacrificing. And then we talked about this last year. So if you've been a long time follower of the channel, I talk about how I separate my money out into buckets. and I firmly believe in this and feel like everybody should do it. I didn't invent it. I actually learned about it from a conference I went to that um, I found out about this conference because I read the book Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. And I got, there were tickets in that book to like a free event. So it's somehow coordinated through like T. Harvecker, who wrote the book Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. And at this conference, they talked about having buckets for your money. And we immediately started bucketing our money and it like changed everything for me. And I've talked about this before on this channel because there's another book called Profit First. Um, I believe David Richter is the author. So get Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, get Profit First, read those books. Well, I'd say before 2021, but it's pretty much almost 2021. So get them and read them in the beginning of 2021 and start bucketing your money because I'm gonna tell you about my buckets. So say I get a $20,000 paycheck from a rehab, which really isn't a lot. Like people think it's a lot. It's really not a lot. Wait till you see where this money goes. So say you flip a house and you get 20 grand. Most people like post that check on social media and they're like, I made 20 grand. Okay, buddy. Let's talk about where that 20 grand goes. And some people take that 20 grand and they just spend spend it, like completely spend it. And you're not going to get ahead that way. And you're not going to end up traveling in the United States in an RV that way. You're just not. Okay. So when you first get that profit, if you're someone that has debt, bad debt, credit card debt, car loans, pay off your debt, get rid of your bad debt before you even start this bucket method, just get rid of your bad debt. Okay. Get rid of your bad debt first, get your credit score where it needs to be. Then I want you to start working the bucket method. So take that $20,000 and you're going to limit the amount that you get to live on. Okay. So you're going to decide I can live on 70% of that income or 60% of that income. And you might have to break it down to see like where your money goes and how much you can afford to bucket out. So this will make sense in a second. I'm going to give you an example. So if I make 20 grand on a rehab, first thing I do is I take 30% right off the top towards taxes. That sucks, right? Like who wants to take 30% of their money and put it in a bucket labeled taxes? Nobody, not even me. And 30% might be a little excessive. You're going to have to pay capital gains tax on your flip projects. And I don't know why no one teaches this, but no one teaches you to set money aside for taxes. And then like newbie flippers are getting like, um, IRS liens filed against them because they can't afford to pay taxes at the end of the year. It's crazy, but you're going to take 30% to taxes. So as an example, if I had a flip chart, I'd hang it over this freaking light thing here on this red wall and break this down for you guys, but you're going to have to write this down because I'm traveling. So my flip chart days are over. But if you take 30% off the top of that 20 grand, it's 6,000. So you're taking 6,000 and just putting it in a bank account labeled taxes. And you're like, where do you get a bank account like that? Just go to your bank and your regular checking account, they can create sub accounts for you. So like at my bank, I have checking and then I have an, a sub account that's just in the same account, but a separate bucket labeled tax, one labeled LSA, one labeled FFA. I'm going to go through all these with you. Okay. So I take that six grand and I put it in the tax account. Then what I do is I take so if you have 20 grand minus your six grand, you're left with $14,000. You're writing this down. I hope you're writing this down. And then I take 20% and I put that in a marketing bucket because your marketing machine going back to consistency can't keep going if you have no money for marketing because you're taking your 20 grand and spending it on ridiculous stuff like I don't know, new Nike sneakers or something. So you're going to take 20% and put it in your marketing bucket. So we went from 20,000, took 6,000 6, off for taxes, took 2,800 off for marketing. We're down to $11,200 paycheck. 
okay? So from 20 grand, we've already almost cut that in half to $11,200 paycheck. What do we do with that paycheck? Here's what you do with it. You are going to take 10% of that and put it in what's called an FFA, Financial Freedom Account. That 10% is $1,120. Doesn't seem like a lot, right? Doesn't matter. Over time, it adds up to be a lot. And that is how you're going to become a private money lender. Because trust me when I tell you, you are not going to want to flip houses and be chasing deals as a wholesaler and working your tail off like crazy your entire life. So set yourself up to start passively, truly passively investing, which is private money lending. Not looking for deals, not working on deals, just lending out your money and making a great return back. So set up your FFA or financial freedom account. So we took that $11,200 paycheck, we're taking 10% and sticking it in FFA, financial freedom. This money can only be reinvested. That's all it's for. So you can't buy a new sweater with it or new shoes. You can't pay your electricity bill with it. None of that. You can only reinvest it. So it goes into an account that you either lend out as a private lender, you put it in stocks if that's something that you're into, you somehow are investing it. Don't have anything to invest it in or it's too small, just let it sit there and let it grow a little bit, okay? Then you're gonna take 10% of that 11,200, so another 1,120, and you're gonna put it in what's called an LSA, long-term savings account. This LSA you can use for like vacations or saving up so that you can travel the United States in your RV and then people can tell you that you're lucky when really you just worked your tail off for 12 years and planned very carefully, and now you're executing that plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the LSA is long-term savings. So that's for vacation fund, big projects around your house, like say you wanna put in a new kitchen in your personal home, that's what your LSA is for, okay? Then you're gonna take 10% of that 11,200 and you're gonna put it in a charity account because you're going to donate money to charity because you don't get anywhere without giving, okay? It's super important that you become a go giver. And what I wanna say about charity is trust me, I know some of you are like, I couldn't afford to donate to charity if I tried and that's okay volunteer somewhere, like skip the 10% that goes to the charity account and just volunteer somewhere or do something nice for someone in your family. Something like that. When I was younger, you guys know if you're watching my channel and you watch my Instagram, you know I had my son when I was 16. If someone would have told me I had to take 10% of my paycheck and donate to charity, I would have been like, yeah, right, where's that gonna come from? So this doesn't all have to happen at once. It's not like you have to be giving 10% to charity and 10% to the FFA. Just set up the buckets. Maybe you start with 5% to each bucket. 5% FFA, 5% charity, 5% LSA, or maybe you just volunteer so you don't do the charity part, but you're doing it via your time. You're giving your time and volunteering, okay? So if we take that, so we started with 20 grand, 6,000 to taxes, that left us with $14,000. We took 2,800 and put it in a marketing bucket to keep our business going. That left us with 11,200. We took 10% to an FFA, which is for investing, 10% to charity, 10% to an LSA, which is like big family vacation or big renovations for your house, your personal home. So we're left with 70% of our money to live on, to live, okay? So that $7,840 we're left with to pay bills. That's your mortgage, your electric bill, your water bill, your sewer bill. Um, for me, I don't have a mortgage anymore, but I have to pay to have my RV parked somewhere. <laughs> so that's kind of like my new mortgage. So whatever your bills are, that's where the leftover 70% goes. I, this is just an example. I think when I first started, I was at 80% to pay my bills. And then I worked my way down to 70. And now we hover like between 60 and 65. So I live off 60 to 65% of my income. And if living in an RV has taught me anything, it's that 
you don't need the stuff you think you need. Like everybody's into different things. So obviously I'm into travel, but I'm not into big house and things and having China and having a China cabinet and having like furniture in two living rooms and like, I'm just not into that stuff. And honestly, like with my grandma passing away recently, she had a house full of stuff. Most senior citizens do. And most of it went into a dumpster. Like your kids don't want your stuff. People don't want a cluttered house full of stuff. Most your stuff isn't worth what you think your stuff is worth. So stop like collecting stuff. Life isn't about things. Okay. It's just not. So anyway, I hope that helps you guys. I hope you have a super lucky 2021. So people can come to you and say, how did you get so lucky? And you really want to say years of really hard work and bucketing my money and being consistent. That's what got me so lucky, but you just go, yeah, it's great. You should come visit sometime. <laughs> so Thanks for tuning in today. You can follow us and find out more on Instagram at April Crosley. Follow our Facebook page, Lazy Girl Real Estate Investing. Check out our website, lazygirlrei.com or email your questions to me and I will answer them on YouTube, april at lazygirlrei.com. I hope you guys had a great Christmas and that you have a fabulous, fabulous new year. Hopefully 2021 is way better than 2020. Take care.